What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. In this video, I have a few crazy builds for you to try when Void 3.0 goes live with Witch Queen. I wanted to make this video months ago, and it was going to be centered around being a Gambit build video. But with Gambit getting an upcoming rework, and the Void subclass completely changing, this seems silly to do. So instead, I started playing around with a couple of exotics and came up with three really cool builds, all centered around the same premise. With Witch Queen, Bungie is moving towards matching your weapon and subclass element types, so these builds will take full advantage of that. But before we get into that, I must shamelessly ask for you to hit the subscribe button. I have been shooting for 5,000 subs before Witch Queen, and this is my last video before it launches. So do your boy a solid and sub to the channel. You won't regret it. Also, if you enjoy the video, consider leaving a like as it really helps the channel. With that out of the way, let us start with the simple version of this build that I was going to make way back when, with the Nezerax Sin Exotic Helmet. Nezerax Sin has a perk called Abyssal Extractors, Void damage kills increase ability energy recharge rate. That is great because we will be getting nothing but void kills with this build. This will allow us to spam our rifts and grenades, and because we can spam rifts, we have the perk Dynamo on our helmet which will reduce our super cooldown when we cast our rift near targets. And we have utility kickstart on our class item to give us a chunk of rift energy back every time we cast it. Because we want to be spamming grenades and rifts, you want as high of recovery and discipline as possible. For the grenade, it doesn't really matter which grenade you use, the grenades are getting reworked with Witch Queen, so just use what you like. My recommendation though would be Scatter Grenades, as they have a relatively short cooldown and they can quickly get a kill when needed. Vortex Grenades can get kills too, but Scatter do more instant damage so that enemy is less likely to get away. But with Void 3.0, Vortex Grenades are going to draw enemies in, so I guess this could change. Regardless, you want a grenade that can quickly get a kill. The reason for this is it was confirmed by Bungie devs on the DCP podcast that you can no longer consume your grenade to proc devour. You now have to get an ability kill. So a melee, grenade, or super kill. And depending on the type of kill, that will determine your timer for devour. Devour no longer will have a 10 second base timer, it will have a timer that is determined by the type of kill that you get. And the timer will be extended by different amounts depending on if you have a certain fragment applied. So how Devour procs now is you can either get a Nova Bomb kill, a Charge Melee kill, or consume your grenade. This will give you a 10 second timer. As long as you get a kill in that 10 seconds, you will refresh the timer and keep Devour going. Getting kills will completely restore your health and keep refreshing the timer. In the Void rework, you will add a certain amount of time to this timer. This can go up to around 17 seconds. So I suspect Devour will be extremely strong, just a little different than it is now. This build is heavily predicated around proccing Devour and the health regeneration that it gives because it has a very CQC centered combat style. So the gameplay loop is as follows. You get a kill with the exotic trace rifle Ruinous Effigy, consume your grenade, pick up the Ruinous Effigy orb, and go to Pound Town. After the update, all that will change is you will have to get a grenade or melee kill instead of consuming your grenade. So basically, what this and the other two builds are all about is using Ruinous Effigy to take out adds. When I run this in Gambit, I run double special because you barely use any of your trace rifle ammo. And Bungie also recently confirmed that exotic trace rifles will do 40% more damage to red bar enemies, so it will be even easier to take out trash adds to spawn a transmutation sphere. I'm not sure if the sphere itself will also do more damage, but if so, then this build just keeps getting stronger. Seriously, there is a fragment I will highlight soon that takes this build to a new level. For my other weapon, I usually like to run a sniper rifle because this build lacks range, so if there are threatening enemies off in the distance, then we can kill them with our sniper. Ruinous Effigy has the exotic perk Transmutation. Final blows with this weapon collapse victims into void transmutation spheres. You can pick up that sphere and use it to smack enemies with. You can also do a slam attack which consumes the orb and deals a lot of damage, or you can use the void suppression field, which heals you while it damages and suppresses enemies, but causes the sphere charge to be depleted quicker. So let's go over the mods for the Nezerex Sin build. We have Well of Tenacity, which reduces the damage we take from combatants for a short period of time when we pick up a Void Well. We have Font of Might, which will increase the damage of our Void Weapons. This means our Ruinous Effigy Spheres will do 25% more damage, as well as whatever Void Heavy Weapon you want to use. Personally, I usually run a Sword. We have Font of Wisdom to give us 100 Intellect for 30 seconds whenever we pick up an Elemental Well. On the Boots, we have Elemental Armaments, which will allow our Void Weapons to spawn Void Elemental Wells. And on the class item, you can run whatever you like. I have Elemental Time Dilation for increasing the length of time that Font of Might and Well of Tenacity last. This mod adds 3 seconds to each timer. But you could also run something like Elemental Ordnance to spawn more Void Wells. 
Because of Nezarek's Sin, we will have really short ability cooldowns so we can spam our grenades. As well, we get grenade energy back when we get kills with Devour active due to the perk Insatiable, but this part of the build may be going away in Witch Queen. Another great helmet to run with this build could be Verity's Brow. Its exotic perk states weapon final blows with a damage type matching your subclass energy grant death throws, which provides a grenade damage bonus and grants you grenade energy. When you have death throws and throw a grenade, nearby allies gain greatly increased grenade regeneration for a short time. With 5 stacks of death throws, your grenades will be hitting for double damage, so replacing Nezarak's Sin with Verity's Brow could also be very strong for this build. But back to Ruinous Effigy, the sphere can kill most red bars in one hit, and with Devour rolling, you don't really have to worry about dying. If a big enemy comes up to you, you can do the slam attack to take it out or at least deal a big chunk of damage, then swap to your sword to finish it off. Elemental armaments will proc a well every 6 red bar kills, or every 3 orange bar kills, and every yellow bar kill. It works the exact same as spawning warmind cells, so you'll pretty much always have Font of Might active due to the number of adds you are killing. As long as you are in a fairly enemy dense environment, then this build will do amazing. That is why I like it so much for Gambit. So that is the first build. But then I got thinking of how we can make this build better, which led me to a different exotic, the Mantle of Battle Harmony. Again, Bungie seems to be leaning more and more into matching subclass elements with your weapons. This is evident by the coming weapon orb generation change. And no exotic does this better than Mantle of Battle Harmony. Its perk is Absorption Cells. Take down with weapons that have a damage type matching your subclass element grant you super energy. While your super energy is full, you instead gain a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the type matching your subclass element. This bonus to weapon damage is 20% and it can stack with Font of Might which is 25%. So a regular hit with the sphere hits for 11,839 damage, with Absorption Cells active it hits for 14,206, and with Font of Might it hits for 14,798. But when both are procced, it hits for 17,758 damage. That's really good damage considering you can hit over and over again, and you can do a slam attack on a higher health enemy to do even more damage. Also, when your super is active, once you have absorption cells procced, if you keep getting kills, it will keep adding time to the timer up to 10 seconds. So just get a kill every few seconds and you will have the damage buff permanently when your super meter is full. And every 6th red bar kill, you drop a well which will buff the damage even more for 10 seconds, or 13 seconds if you are running elemental time dilation. Are you seeing the synergy here? It's nasty. In the background gameplay I kill one of the yellow bar dogs with a slam when I have absorption cells and font of might, and it does 88,787 damage. That is on par with an explosive light rocket. So yeah, it's pretty strong. As I mentioned at the top, this build is super ammo efficient, so I'd recommend running double specials with this build as well. A great pairing to go with this would be the kinetic grenade launcher pardon our dust with auto loading and blinding grenades. This will blind enemies and have them walking around stunned. This would be great for high-end content as it would give you time to get a kill with Ruinous Effigy, proc Devour, and grab the Sphere and then just go to town beating everything down. And if you have auto-loading, then your grenade launcher will be ready to fire when your Sphere runs out and then just rinse and repeat. So I actually have two builds with Mantle of Battle Harmony, an offensive build and a defensive build. In the defensive build, you aren't worried so much about damage but just want survivability. So for mods we have Elemental Ordnance to create wells with our grenades, and again, we have Elemental Armaments which will proc when we get a certain amount of kills with a Void Weapon. We then have Well of Tenacity which, as we talked about before, reduces the incoming damage from combatants for a brief amount of time. And then we have Elemental Charge which will give us 2 stacks of Charge with Light when we pick up a Void Well. And finally, we have Protective Light on our Gloves which gives us significant damage resistance against combatants when our shields are destroyed. So this gives us 2 mods that are helping to keep us alive. And of course, we have Devour, so we just have to get a kill before dying, and we'll get all our health back. So this is the tank version of our build. Now, let's take a look at the Glass Cannon. And this honestly isn't even the right description, because with Devour, we are still quite tanky, but just not as much as the last build. So for this build, instead of Protective Light, we throw Font of Might back on. We still have Elemental Armaments to drop as wells for getting Void Weapon Kills, so we can get that from Ruinous Effigy or the Sword. And then we have Font of Wisdom, but again, this is negotiable. You could choose something like Supercharge to hold more stacks of Charge with Light, or Elemental Ordinance for another way to make Wells. The choice is yours. But then we have Elemental Charge again for getting stacks of Charge with Light, but rather than having us be protected with Protective Light, we are opting to increase our Sword Damage with Lucent Blade. Lucent Blade will make our Sword do 35% extra damage, 
and Font of Might also stacks with this to do 68.75% more damage. One thing to note is that Absorption Cells does not stack with Lucent Blade, but Absorption Cells will stack with Font of Might. So basically, you have three ways of increasing your damage. Absorption Cells for 20% more damage, Font of Might for 25% more damage, and Lucent Blade for 35% more damage. And Font of Might will stack on top of either Absorption Cells or Lucent Blade. That is a whole lot of damage perks. And it sounds like Void 3.0 is bringing along a watered down version of Oppressive Darkness called Weaken I believe. The Hunter melee ability can weaken enemies by 15% in PvE, so I'm sure the Warlock will get some way to apply a light debuff. As well, the Bungie devs specifically talked about a fragment called Volatile Rounds, and they mentioned how Ruinous Effigy can apply that. I think Volatile is like the Void Explosions on Middle Tree Sentinel Titan, but I could be mistaken. Either way, whatever Volatile Rounds is, it was stated that it works on Ruinous Effigy, and I imagine it is quite strong. Maybe it even debuffs enemies. I don't know. But just imagine this. You make a Transmutation Sphere, proc Devour with an Ability Kill, pick up the Sphere, and start beating enemies. Devour is proccing over and over, you are making Wells to gain Font of Might, if your Super is full you are also getting a buff from Absorption Cells, plus you are applying Volatile Rounds onto the enemies. Sounds nasty, right? And there is something else I haven't even hit on. So, say you don't have your super yet. Mantle of Battle Harmony will be giving extra super energy due to its exotic perk. And there is a fragment that also gives more super energy. It is called Echo of Reprisal and it states final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. So I imagine you will get your super extremely quickly. So you'll just be a one man wrecking crew. But even in a team environment, this is very good. And if your team has a tether or someone with a tractor cannon, then you can do even more damage. You can have Font of Might plus Lucent Blade and hit an enemy that is debuffed, so you'll be adding 2.2x more damage with your sword than normal with the heavy damage build. Guys, I'm not even kidding, day 1 Legendary Witch Queen campaign, I will be running this build, or one of these versions. I am running with a couple clanmates, so I may even opt for the high damage variant as I can play a little more loose and aggressive because they're really good players. But if it is harder than I expect, I will just swap to the tank build with Well of Tenacity and Protective Light. I seriously cannot wait. All of these fragments and the buff to Runus Effigy play perfectly into this already amazing build. Before I wrap things up, I should talk about the other mods I have equipped. I run Double Sword Ammo Finder on my helmet, Bolstering Detonation and Focusing Strike on my gloves to give me class ability energy when I hit an enemy with a Grenader Melee, Double Concussive Dampener on my chest piece, but if you know you are against a lot of void damage, you could throw in one or two of those instead. It just depends on the enemy damage type. I run Trace Rifle Scavenger and Enhanced Sword Ammo Scavenger on my boots, but that will be going away in Witch Queen, so I would just recommend Sword Scavenger. As I said, Ruinous Effigy barely uses ammo because all of your kills are coming from the sphere. And I think I mentioned it on the Nezerex build, but Utility Kickstart is always nice. Even though we will usually be getting health back from Devour, but if you don't have it, a Rift can always come in handy. I've always liked aggressive playstyles as evidenced by my last few build videos and this build is no exception. I'm not sure how glaives will work and if they will be element specific, but if we had a void glaive then that could work very well in place of the sword or ruinous effigy for this build too, depending on what slot it is in. If it is legendary and in the kinetic slot, then you could even run it in place of the sniper. We will find out soon enough. As I showed in this video, this is a very versatile build. You can build around heavy damage or heavy damage resistance. You can use Font of Wisdom for really fast supers, or things like Elemental Charge and have a combination of Wells and Charge with Light mods. I hope this video gave you some cool ideas for builds to try out on Warlock and Witch Queen. I know I am super excited to play around with all the options available to us as soon as I can. So stay tuned to the channel for more crack builds and in-depth breakdowns of all kinds of stuff that is coming with Witch Queen. I have some time off work to grind so I'll be cranking out the content. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you aren't subscribed already, consider doing so as it really helps my channel. I hope you are all as excited for Witch Queen as I am. I will see you there. Let's hope we don't run into any server issues. Anyways, that's it for the video. Enjoy Witch Queen my friends, and take care.